Welcome to Spiritual Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Mary Beth, and this is the podcast where each week I get to interview psychics, people who can channel, medium, spiritual teachers, and healers. And I have a wonderful guest I'm so excited to introduce you to today. His name is Jemai Merck. How are you doing, Jemai? Doing really well. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks for saving me. You know, as you know, I had another guest and you came in and swooped in and saved the day for me. She had a stomach virus. So, you know, obviously that's not that's not a good time to do an episode. So um, I'm going to go ahead and read your bio. And you guys, I have a special treat for you. Jemai is actually going to answer questions from the audience. And I've got them right here next to me. He has no idea what I'm going to ask him. And these are some deep deep questions like we're not messing around today and it's all about relationships and trauma and shadow work things like that so this is like the, his area of expertise here jemai is actually a celebrity psychic a medium a hypnotist he's also an intuitive life coach and a shamanic healer so he's really got a lot going on here and he's it's going to be a wonderful show so we're going to go over his background a little bit first and then we'll get right into these questions so jemai merck is an internationally known celebrity psychic medium hypnotist and healer with his industrial design degree he has made custom jewelry design for over 20 years he integrates his healing and intuitive abilities into his spiritual lines of jewelry he has worked with many celebrities and industry clients, as well as spoken and given readings nationwide for over two decades. Jemai touches on what's happening now in your life to see what's seen in the future. He'll discuss how your path can change due to past inherited traumas that may have followed in lineage and how you can heal to shift the past, to transform the future and what that holds. As an intuitive healer, he can see and help you through physical issues in the body, terminal illness, relationship issues, letting go, professional uncertainty, depression, and more. A session with Jemai helps you to see more of your true, complete self so that you have a solid chance to change your life for the better. Jemai has a strong track record of being extremely accurate. Jemai also teaches spiritual and self-development courses, as well as being a co-host on LA Talk Radio's Soul Sexy Radio. I don't know why I said it that way, Soul Sexy. Okay, so Jemai, I wanna hear some a little bit, you know, I don't even know your background. I know you, I know you in real life, but I've never been like, tell me about yourself. So have you always been um, psychic and spiritual or was there a catalyst that kind of led you down this path? Um, yeah. So I was born a medium. Uh, I was potty trained by twin ghosts. I, uh, wait, 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 what? What did you just say? You were potty trained by, by what? By, by twin ghosts. Um, oh. There's twins. Uh, some would call them guardian angels. Uh, but the way they presented themselves were actually about my size at two years old. Um, but they looked like they were 16. It was a boy and a girl. And they would show up and take care of me. They would do things for me. They would help me. They would protect me from things that were coming that I could witness as well. They were just a, a facet of my life. And I thought they were real people until I was 15 uh, when my mom actually introverted in a, uh, in a discussion I was having and, and forced me to sit down. And as she was crying, told me how these people weren't actual friends that lived. They were from another dimension. And so it was a, a part of my upbringing to connect with entities, um, to witness people's lineage, their spirit guides and things like that. Uh, it wasn't until I was breaching an age uh, through growth of spirituality up until about 13, when I had a near-death experience, that I was really forced into the light of my purpose here. Um, which I was told was to change the world, was to help change the world, to help people see their true gifts, their true power, um, and to help people value themselves again. And so after a near-death experience, when I was 13, uh, was still on a pretty strong spiritual journey, studied over 200 religions and spiritual practices of the world by the time I was 18, and was doing shamanic healing work and had been doing healing work as well as I had a lot of young people coming to me to prevent suicides. Wow. Um, 
I was known as a suicide kid in high school because people would randomly call me on a Friday and Saturday night to talk their friends out of suicide um, from all different school districts, even not even kids that were local to me. Um, so yes, I've always been in the presence of giving. I've been challenged in life in ways to, to force me to heal myself, uh, being brain dead, a vegetable in a coma, uh, having to learn how to talk again, and then also how learning how to walk again uh, in my early 20s. Um, mm. I've had a lot of back, back sets, you could say, or strong lessons, um, incredible traumas to work through for myself that's also helped me to help others but uh, my experience going from a medium uh, as a young young child into psychic ability and understanding what intuition and psychic ability can do um, really led me down the path of healing and helping people continually as well as using the platform of life as a canvas to paint a more balanced and um, giving existence um, so I would say one of the things I, I've always done is really help people understand their true strengths, understand where the trauma is that, that's within them, how to handle it, how to deal with it, how to heal through things, as well as really tackle obstacles for people. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've branched off into m more of the uh, teacher role, teaching psychics and healers uh, over the last 16, 17 years, but I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one personal rehabilitation, development, coaching, uh, pretty much everything in the wellness uh, world. So yeah, it's, it's been fun. Yeah. No, number one, I cannot believe I didn't know most of that stuff about you. That is wild. I need to start asking people <laughs> more questions. And number two, you guys, Jemai is good. I have hired, I've hired Jemai myself personally. And um, I would say that ex extremely accurate is is definitely not an exaggeration there. Um, you're very extremely accurate. Thank you. With, Thank yes, you so much. I highly recommend um, for any of those things that you talked about, whether it's career, I think career path was what you helped me with a lot. That's that was definitely something that you got me unstuck to say. And then yeah, I also I know it. Look what you did. And I also <laughs> do love your jewelry. I, I was going to put it on, but it was better to show you this way. And like you said, it's like infused. Did you call it? Oh, integrates. Um, like energetically explain that into yeah. your jewelry. Cause it's more than just jewelry. It's, it's actually energetically boosted. Is that the right word? Yeah. You could say that you could say it's supercharged. Um, <laughs> supercharged. So, so the jewelry is really an extension of me. Um, when I was 17, I started having visions of sacred symbolism. My guides, uh, being a visionary, being someone who's always paid attention to their dreams and visions, um, I witnessed these symbols, and my guides kept telling me it was a language of creation. And there was a lot of diverse symbolism. I didn't know what it represented specifically. I just kept getting this. It's the language of creation. And so I was drawing it for years. And then eventually, um, through the process of, of you know, manifestation, um, my guides, um, also in the vision said that if I created the symbols, that it would help us remember what we are. Mm. And so I felt like it was more of a personal journey as far as my own healing, as well as giving to people, because I was guided to carve them by hand and meditation, uh, with a high regard for what I was creating and who it was going to, um, but also to use the finest material possible on this planet. And so I used the finest sterling in the world. I used the highest frequency, best calibrated caliber of quality gemstones of the world, stones that have been used by every culture, the majority of cultures, and the most used healing stones in the world. So they're a part of all of our lineages, dating back thousands and thousands of years. Um, and so the biogeometry, the symbolism that I'm carving is actually in Fibonacci and golden mean ratios, which helps align uh, systematically all of the biochemistry and physicality of our being as well as our energy and so wow. there is a direct result of the symbolism i use and how it affects the body but then also the metals used to pull heavy metal and heal the body as well the stones are the nicest and highest frequency that they can be so everything about my pieces and multi uh, facets and levels um, is designed to help us remember nice. what we are and to heal 
completely. So, so yeah, they're, I think they're effective. Uh, I do yeah. pretty well uh, with um, what it is that clients say when they wear them. Um, as you just showed, the, the balance was only the second piece that I ever carved. And it, it is an ancient symbol for life force. And this one that I have force. here. Mm -hmm. I always called it the chakra. Has, yeah, it's what I called yeah. it the chakra necklace, but I could be wrong about that. I thought it was the chakras. <laughs> Am I wrong? Um, well, chakra is the Eastern terminology. Uh, we are okay. all the rainbow. We're made of water. So the color frequencies of healing, because it's actually the color that's healing us, not, not mm -hmm. the stone itself or the metal itself, even to that degree. They, they are effective conduits for the color that they're representing in frequency. And so <clears throat> the color is full spectrum. You are full spectrum. In whatever language you want to use, you are the rainbow. And so the chakra system highlights that out of, out of the Eastern cultures and the practices of Eastern medicine, but also in spiritual belief. And then if you look at all the shamanic cultures of the world, they all share the same rainbow, same series of colors and same effective per, uh, you know, point of interest for each color and how it affects the body, emotions or spirit. And so, yeah, that's a full spectrum piece is what I call it. Um, and it's the complete balance. Uh, so it brings a lot of balance. A lot of people who wear that piece say it feels like a mother's hug. It's very, Aww. very nurturing. Yeah. I wish yeah, I had I it on now. <laughs> I think it's my prettiest piece. Maybe. I don't know. I, well, that's judge. why, that's why I, <laughs> that's why I picked it. Cause I felt that too. When I saw it, at, I saw it at an expo and I was like, that, that's mine. That's mine. It was the last one you had there. So I, I, I nabbed it. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. That's awesome. What were you I'm saying glad. earlier about, um, what were you going to say? Sorry. You were going to say something. I was just saying thank you for supporting. Oh. So uh, thank you for making this wonderful jewelry. So I was just going to say earlier, like what you were saying about how mm -hmm. when you become someone like when you're like, let's say we signed up for this incarnation to be a healer, to be a spiritual teacher, I've noticed mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, that it seems like we all have to go through this, some sort of dark night of the soul. We all have to go through so many challenges in order for us to like have that experience before we can kind of graduate next level in order to be able to help others. Is that, is that correct? I haven't really met anyone that doesn't match that <laughs> description. Um, it seems like the protocol. Yeah. yeah it uh, it, reasonably it's, uh, I guess the way I would say it is we've all inherited all of the traumas. We all share all of the lifetimes. We all have been each other, you know, and because yeah. of that, we all have, similarities, but also because of the finite inherited structure of your being, what strengths and, and traumas you've inherited specifically that stand out, that is part of your journey. So all of us are going to have different traumas and different experiences based on the strengths of our lineage and the traumas of our lineage, how mm -hmm. we hold them, what we do with them, how we carry ourselves, how we use our strengths to support and grow through this life and evolve, or how we use our strengths and deny our traumas to keep having to force ourselves into that cycle of repetition of learning, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, we all are very different in that and we all have to face certain tribulations, but yeah. no matter what you come from, what your strengths are, we all have to heal. And so I think it's a given that at some point, if you're not trying to, you're going to be forced to deal with the same trauma again mm -hmm. or, or go through it again. And for some people that highlights an availability of strength in their lineage, it says, you know what, I think I can help. Whereas for other people, they think they can help in other ways. Uh, you don't have to be a healer to help the world. Uh, for example, I'm launching a business in Sweden this year. That's a really major facet for changing world economic trade. And so, you know, that's healer goes, jewelry goes, crypto you know what i mean you can you can do a lot of things in a holistic manner and sustainable manner to help the earth and to help one another by resolving the issues we have at hand um but yeah i do think it's true uh, in the st in the statement that you made that it is pretty prevalent that a healer has been through tra traumas that also allowed them to be stronger in their traits as a healer um mm -hmm. and the and, perfect you know, traumas for their path too like how i struggled with alcohol and I don't think I could have 
been such a good coach, like as an addiction recovery coach and, and also learning like law of attraction is what, what got me out of my addiction. And so that's what I, that's the techniques that I teach. Cause it's like, if it, if it worked for me, I know it's got to work for other people. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, you know, some of us hold our traumas dear to our heart and use them to full capacity to heal and learn, learn through them where, you know, some of us will struggle with that and, and want to hide mm -hmm. them or just keep them very personal, you know, not show the world what we can do to <laughs> overcome trauma. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's fine. Um, as long as you are looking for uh, the strength in yourself and harnessing those strengths to overcome what feels like a weakness, then you're on the right track. And, you know, again, that applies to every facet of life and every type of individual. I have clients across the board from professional athletes and celebrity, you know, uh, A-list and B-list celebrities um, and, and artists to, you know, corporate lawyers and judges and people in prison and doctors on an operating table. Like, you know, I just, I've, I've been forced to and been blessed to help people in all kinds of scenarios and all walks of life. And it's not always just about healing through trauma. Sometimes it's about making a critical decision. Sometimes it's about not killing yourself, you know, and mm -hmm. to any extent, uh, there's a reasonable protocol that I use to help people through it all. And, and, you know, I enjoy doing it. And as long as I enjoy doing it and can make uh, a living that's uh, available to support my family, and the future endeavors, then, you know, I'll continue doing it for life. I, I figure. <laughs> well, I love what you, like when you're talking, I'm thinking that's like wonderful that you've got that so many people are opening up to this because it used to be considered so weird or woo woo when you're ta you're talking about athletes and judges and doctors and pe people, lawyers, people who you would mm -hmm. normally consider that be, you know, kind of think that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy talk. And so I just love it. Yeah. I've noticed a huge shift I, myself that in people, you know, I came out of the spiritual closet. I don't care if anybody thinks it's weird or crazy anymore, but I had to go through that. You know, I had to go through that yeah. and sharing my story too. Like, that's why I was kind of almost laughing earlier. Cause it's like, I tell the world everything now, but I used to care a lot about what people thought. And, and I, and I realized yeah. I kind of feel this sense of an obligation now like after being what i've been through to help other people who are in a similar you know yeah. addiction or relationship codependency things like that like that's also an addiction by the way you know get being stuck in a codependent relationship and um so you know i just feel like it's a sense of obligation once we get ourselves out of the darkness like let's help lead other people to the light yeah yeah, and that's why I started the Light Warrior Community. Um, was exactly for that reason. I, I've been coaching and teaching so many people that are incredibly talented and skillful when it comes to helping others uh, in different ways that it just made sense to start the Light Warrior Community, which is that in a nutshell. Uh, anyone out there who wants to in, enjoy their life, <laughs> first of all, uh, but also really feel secure in the value of themselves and what it is you're bringing to the table for this world. And you want to use it to actually change the world come to me because, you know, I help people kick ass. That's what I do. <laughs> so, um, and, and yeah, you know, um, be a good tagline on your business card. I help people kick ass. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's what it's become um, legitimately. Um, but yeah, whether you're a doctor needing to take cold plunges and meditate more, or whether you're a professional athlete that wants to recoup from an injury right away, you know, I, I can teach all, all levels of that and harnessing your own strengths to heal and persevere through um, obstacles of um, having insecurities or being unassured of your future. Um, there's a lot of ways that uh, that we ourselves are capable of doing more. And so if you're interested in that, be a light warrior. Let's kick mm -hmm. some ass. <laughs> yeah. And we're all self healers. And that's what a lot of us like. It's like everybody is self healers. Just so sometimes we need to reach out mm -hmm. and get that guidance. Like that's why I love like talking to all different types of people, learning all these different modalities. Everybody works so different. It's it's fun to me. Maybe it's even an yeah. addiction, but it's a great addiction. It's a fun addiction. Yeah. I learned I learned so much. So we're about halfway through. So do you want to get to the um, audience questions? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. So this first Let's one, yeah, I, I, these are some good questions. I was really um, excited 
when I got them. And I know you don't know what I'm going to ask you. This first one is, mm -hmm. um, I felt the most relatable. So that's what we're going to say at first. This one's from Sarah. Sarah okay. says, I have had a traumatic life. And despite my efforts to improve my situation with education, self-awareness, and self-love, I continue to have bad dreams, panic attacks, and I overeat. How can I release this trauma on the subconscious level in order to move forward in life? So she's stuck, even though she's doing all the things, like all the things that, you know, we would say, you know, like she's working on it, but there still seems to be the subconscious programming. Like, what do you recommend if, you know, she's already doing like meditation and breath work and I don't, I mean, I, I'm assuming she didn't say she was doing yeah. that, but, but what would you? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, after connecting to her directly, I would say that she has a, an issue with having control and she needs to dance in the rain. She needs to release through emotional expression without a logical format and without a need to accomplish something. Um, she beats herself up because a lot of people in her lineage took on a language of self-ridicule. And so she is used to being her worst advocate. Um, so it doesn't matter how much she does in her case, if she's going to keep putting herself down and feeling the need to control every as aspect of her life. So the letting go is a big part of her next leg mm -hmm. in her journey of healing, um, being able to feel comfortable in the chaos and to feel okay with not knowing what's next or feel okay with not controlling every aspect um, of her existence. You, you know, she's doing a lot of wonderful things and I, you know, salute anyone who is doing all of those things that you mentioned um, to, to, provocate a better existence for their well-being it's necessary but that's not where it stops that's just one aspect of it and so yeah based on what i feel through her i would say she needs to let go of the control and for everyone it's going to be different just so you guys know not everybody's going to have a control issue just because they're not satisfied through their practice but for her specifically i can see what she's dealing with i can see all the memories of her ancestry and i can see where she got the, the strengths and the trauma from. So um, yeah, if you want to connect to me or reach out to me, let me know. So since you're still connected to her, she had a second question. I just want to do that one first because it was the most, you know, it was more relatable. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people feel that way. Like I'm doing all the work and I can't, I still can't get there. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so this is still Sarah. My husband mm -hmm. passed away 11 months ago, 11 months. I have been told that okay. his spirit, I've been told that his spirit is with me and I want to believe it. I've asked him to make himself known to me. However, I don't feel him or see him or, or, or see his evidence that he is here. What is the truth? Uh, the truth is he, he did make it through the in-between. He's around. Um, the truth is he's still hurt um, and still a little bit. Uh, he's holding on uh, to a lot of the disappointment and having to leave. Um, there's a lot of trauma for him around his death. And so he's not really ready to talk. Um, he's around and she can potentially feel him. Um, but I guess what I should say in the more finite sense is he's almost through. Normally it takes three to six months to go through the in-between because mm -hmm. of his situation, because of how he died and, and where he was emotionally and his life force when he passed, um, he's not really willing to let go. He's still fighting against it. And so he won't really fully be through the in-between until he decides to do that. Now there's no time in the in-between. So it could be 10 seconds for him or 10,000 years for us. It doesn't, it doesn't really right. matter, but obviously for us in this dimension, it does because we want to know. Um, and so I would speaking to her directly, I would say, you know, be patient uh, again, the control thing, don't expect him to show you a sign. Just know that he's there. Know that he's with you. Uh, he's just having a difficult time. So what I would do if I were you is speak to him directly as if he's not gone and, and soothe his need to feel comforted and the abandonment or the, the disattachment that he has to go through uh, from this dimension. He's still not fully letting go. And wow. so, again, try not to force an agenda because it's not yours. And second, uh, you know, just know that he's with you. And the more that you can make him feel comforted, the more you will actually feel him. Because once he's fully in or out of the in-between, 
then you're going to feel more of him. That's just how it works. And that goes for everyone out there listening. If you lose somebody, try not to demand a sign. Try not to say, speak to me, because they don't know what they're doing on the other side yet. It's like a, being born in, into a new world again. And so you got to give them a little bit of time to be able to communicate in some way, but know that if they're struggling to get through the in-between or there's a potential for that because they died in a harsh way or by accident or suicide or they had dementia, they're going to be trying to recoup their conscious availability still. But once they get through the in-between, you will feel them more automatically. And so it'll be easier for you as a person in this dimension once they get through the in-between. But it's always that in-between moment that's like right after a breakup where you just feel like you're in shambles. You can't process it right. You don't feel what you used to feel. You don't like what you're not feeling, you know, and it's difficult. But just okay. know that once they get through the in-between, you'll feel something. You will feel different. You will feel their connection at peace. Okay. Perfect. They, it, I had full body goosebumps the whole time you were talking. I know Sarah, so. Um, David B. Okay. Do you need, you don't need the last name. David. Okay. When someone doesn't have any love or sexual feelings towards an ex and they were cheated on and it ultimately led to the marriage failing, his ex-wife cheated on him. Okay. That's what he's trying to say. Why is it mm -hmm. so hard to remove the chains, the chains from your heart and love again? I really do trust people. So I'm not sure it's that it's the pain that comes with hurt that scares me. It wasn't just me that was hurt. It was also my kids. And that just locked my heart up more. Um, it's abandonment specific from his lineage. Um, he inherited abandonment traumas. Um, there is some on his mother's side. And when, you know, in this case, this is basically an opportunity for healing from the universe to suggest that he needs to dig deeper. So he's on the right track. The fact that he's asking me about it means that he's on the right track. Uh, he wants to know the information. So that's the information, bud. Davey boy. Um, I took him to the expo. Yeah and oh, like did? kind of okay. dragged him there well he wasn't into any of this but he i said mm -hmm. there was there was a psychic medium there that i didn't know her mm -hmm. i was just felt you know how we, we feel things and i knew she would be the one and he sat down with her and um he, she was like oh your dad tom is here and he knows about your mom's car wreck that she got in last like all these things like it was just crazy like just brrr, it, so needless to yeah. say he's had a change mm -hmm. of heart He's had a change of heart. Right, good. I want him go to ahead. get on this podcast and talk. His experience was crazy. So yeah, I would like, like, I love that's a, that's a true spiritual transformation over in, in, a, in 15 minutes. That was as long as his, he, he's like, went from not believing in shit to believing at all, you know? So oh, nice. it's pretty cool. That's, that's David. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, it's just, it's abandonment trauma that he's going to have to work through. Um, sure he can trust because of the nurturing tendencies of his lineage some of the strengths that he inherited he's a he's quite a giver um and you know you when you keep giving and giving and this goes out to all the givers out there um don't take it in vain if someone can't receive what you're giving it's because they're not the right person it's really that simple mm -hmm. um and you're a lesson for them just like they're a lesson for you and either you grow with them and you both can mature through that or you don't and in this case obviously you know you had to stand up for integrity and and walk away from that relationship um which is great but doesn't mean it's not going to hurt and doesn't mean you're not going to blame yourself because of the abandonment stress that you inherited um you know a lot of times we'll take the trauma that we have and we'll use it against ourselves. and even if right. we can't see the trauma it's a faceless pain is what i call it and that faceless pain haunts us but it is triggered like we feel it in our body, we get it in our heart, we feel it in, in, the, in the psychological sense, um, but we don't always know what to do with it, why it's there, why is this so problematic? He referenced it as chains holding him down. And, and that's a perfect description because that's what it feels like. It feels like something's keeping you from breathing, from being free. And it's the trauma that was already with you, unfortunately. But the fortunate thing is, is now it's surfacing, now you can feel it. So if you just adjust yourself to say consciously, this is trauma that I inherited. I'm not abandoned. My kids aren't abandoned. She did what she had to do. The kids are growing from it. This is just a part of the cycle that they have to learn from because they inherited some of 
my abandoned trauma. We can work together through this. This is now an opportunity for us all to heal together. And so there's a lot of, and I believe we pick our parents, we pick our parents we pick to learn that everything that they're learned, they, they picked you, David, as the dad, they picked your ex-wife as the mom. They wanted to experience exactly what they're experiencing. They, they, they were, they signed up for that journey. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, so sorry. That's okay. I was just going to say the way I see it is, you know, we're given an opportunity. It's like getting hired onto a job you know nothing about. And mm. yeah, yeah, we signed the contract, but we don't know what we're getting into until we get here. <laughs> it's like being oh, yeah, deployed plus, oh, yeah, the military. Plus, oh, yeah, we, can't, we don't even get to remember all of our, you know, who you're waking people up to, remembering who, who we truly are. We don't, we have amnesia for a long time before we get that opportunity to wake up, right? Yeah, that's uh, seemingly, so, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to I'm trying to think of who to do next here. Let's do Ron, 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 a client of mine, actually. And I sent him the, the thumbnail that says the juicy conversation. He said, well, this isn't juicy or sexy. It's important. What advice, advice, <laughs> by the way, by the way, he's not really into all of, and I know he's going to watch this because we're he knows we're talking about him. Um, he's not into all the psychic medium stuff. So I hope he can freak his freak a little bit because that's always fun. What advice okay. do you give a middle-aged man who lost his mother at 13 due to suicide and a very bad marriage relationship with his relationship with his relationship? Well, I mean, okay, marriage slash also relationship with his father. He didn't have a marriage with his father. After my two failed marriages, I feel like I haven't dealt with my issues from past from my past and I swept things under the rug, kind of hiding from the issues and they have come back to literally impact me. Things like trust, true love and relationships in general. Ron. So <laughs> what's the question? The, I mean, he answered. It sounded like the answer. He, he, uh, he, he, he nailed it. Um, he said, what advice would you give? Um, because I, he thinks all of it, um, well, and of course, this is going to affect your life. His mom committed suicide when he was 13 years old. Um, so that's what kind of started the trauma. His dad was pretty absent. Um, his dad was, his dad was, his dad was in, like the whole reason his mom committed suicide. I just know the story, but, but he's just saying, like, how does he get to that point of, like trust and true love and oh okay and so, so that how does he because he's not healed at mm -hmm. all and he, he knows right. he, he's working he's aware of it so before when he came to me yeah. he was finally aware okay i got a lot of work to do and and that's good he's done it's been a huge transformation but he still feels like because he's still going through the divorce he's still going through this so how do you not be jaded because he also that that's another thing that he said here is like it says uh, an advice to uh, handle a soon to be ex-wife who is gold digging me for every last penny. How do I handle this? I don't want to seek revenge or gossip, but it's very hard to forgive. So he's stuck. It's like, how do I forgive when I'm still dealing with the court battle? Like, is there a way to do that? Or is, should he just like be easy on himself and just, you know what I mean? Like, this isn't the time. Is yeah. there is there a time to forgive? And maybe this just simply isn't it. Um. Yeah, well, forgiveness is a very difficult thing for all of us. Um, forgiving ourselves is what's necessary um, in order to forgive others, and that's part of it. So part of this is he's holding on to guilt for choosing to be with her um, really? in that particular scenario, but also there's guilt around the trauma of his mom leaving, guilt around pushing her away. Um, you know, we have to survive, right? And when you're young and you lose a parent, you immediately trigger survival instincts that allow you to overcome and still be a student in school and still not go to prison for beating kids up on the playground. Um, <clears throat> but there's, there is serious traumas uh, that are still looming and affecting him from his mother's passing that absolutely are affecting his relationships, the abandonment too, speaking from the previous uh, caller or, or write-in. Um, mm -hmm. there is abandonment there that he has to deal with in a very direct way. Um, I personally would recommend a healing session based on what I feel for him. Um, I would want to help, you know, in a strong way, uh, remove some of the trauma 
um, just to give him breathing room to start to see clearly because he's, he's a, he's a smart person. He's very capable of resolving problems. He comes from problem solvers. And so it's, it's hard for him also when he can't figure it out. So, so I would want to give him the tools in that sense uh, to be able to overcome. And I know I'm, I'm talking kind of generically, but, but really this goes out to everyone. Each of us are so independent. There's a very specific protocol to each person I work with and how we approach the healing process. For some people, it's healing right away and learning later. For some people, it's learning some things first and then getting their ass kicked. And, you know, th there's a lot of ways to approach it. But for him specifically, um, I, I would say this. He's been good as a nurturer. He's been available for the traumas that he's been through. He's been able to really do a lot for himself. And, and his guys are looking down on him with open arms and, and smiles because they know that he's a good person. And, you know, you I would say you don't deserve all of this. But the reason that all of these things are happening to you is because you're strong as hell. And because you're meant to understand all of these things. And so things will get better. And I can absolutely help you through that process. But in the meantime, I would say, just know it's not your fault. Let go of the guilt. Your mom didn't die because of you. You're not suffering more because your mom, uh, because you pushed your mom away or you're not, you know, estranged from your mother in any way, uh, in, in, in any sense of disregard. You're not the reason. And in this scenario, in similar scenarios that I see previous to this scenario in relationships, you're not the reason. Yeah, you've got traumas and things you have to work through, but you're also attracting the pain that you think you deserve. And mm -hmm. that's not fair to, fair to you. And so it's a leveling up of valuing yourself enough and letting go of the guilt and shame that you've been holding on to, bud. On a conscious level? He told me, and I don't understand, like subconsciously it might be differently, but on a conscious level, he does not feel uh, that he was responsible at all for his mom's suicide. And his, that's what he, he would say out loud. Do, since mm -hmm. you're tapped into him, do you think on a subconscious level, he actually has, is taken some sort of responsibility for that or? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's why I said it. Because I can feel it's not just him. He inherited that guilt because there's other abandonment situations that, that he directly in his lineage. Inherited. That's why his mother left in his lifetime in this journey, because he was built for it, you could say. Mm. Um, and so even though it feels like something no child should ever go through, he's been through it before. And so, you know, it, it's a progressive life transition while being a remembrance of traumas that he's experienced in another time. Um, but, you know, he inherited it in his blood. So there's memories within him that would, that would help assist him on that journey. Doesn't mean it's easy. It just means that, you know, he may be able to say, I, I don't feel guilt toward her death, but there is a guilt that he inherited that would really force that. And, and even as any child, I would say any child I've worked with who's lost a parent, still hold some amount of guilt. They, they don't totally blame themselves all the time, but they do feel like there's something they could have done. And, mm -hmm. and that guilt can really undermine progress in the healing sense, but also it's a lie. If you're trying to tell yourself, you, you don't take on any blame. Right. Um, and then also he's, he's never heard progress. of ancestral DNA, you know, ancestral DNA, like that's a whole topic that we've never even touched. <laughs> That's something that'll be new to him. So yeah. that's good. And it and that plays a major role in what we are. Uh, it's about half of what we, you know, pull from memory isn't our lifetime of memory. It's a database of every lifetime before you, mm -hmm. every life that was a part of your lineage. So every aunt, uncle, grandpa, cousin, brother, sister, you name it, you have all of their memories inside of you. And so you know, there's a lot there basically to pull from, but that's also what makes healing a difficult challenge for most of us because we can't see where all of this stuff is coming from. It's not on paper, like first grade coloring books. You know, it's, it's something that we have to feel within ourselves to see. And it's, you know, I teach people how to do that, but it's also inertly something some people can do really well and some people really struggle with. And so, you know, uh, for this particular gentleman, uh, he has that availability in him to see more. He articulates well. He's already speaking in the ancient language to some format without realizing it. And, you know, 
there's a lot that he's available to do that he hasn't done yet because of it. So. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for that. And I've got a few more, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one is from Jackie. How do you open your heart after a series of painful relationships? Is my resistance to resistance to dating part of my healing path or is it a subconscious attempt to avoid pain? Jackie. All right, Jackie. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I'm just sorry. I'm seeing a lot for her. She is, I'm going to say a bunch of stuff real quick. Ready? Go. She's different than other people in her lineage and that she has more of the dark witch in her. She has more availability to create and destroy than other people in her family. Um, dark witch isn't a bad thing. And I want to make sure I reiterate that not a bad thing. Uh, dark and light is what we are. And some of us inherit more strength to deceive, to create an illusion than others. And that's dark energy. It's like sorcery. It's witchery in some form, but there's also white energy, right? The healing energy, the love energy, the, the absolute uh, acceptance and appreciation and forgiveness in the dark energy. It says, you know what? No, you deserve to get your ass kicked. Um, you know, dark energy would say, you know what? I'm going to try this drug because I need to know how it feels. And regardless if it's going to hurt my physical being, um, <clears throat> There's a balance for within us that we have to maintain. And for her, she's been good to keep the balance, but she attracts wounded birds because of her dark energy. She attracts people that can't support her because she's supposed to support them in some way and learn from them. And so if she doesn't want to do that anymore. She needs to find a nice cohesive connection and believe in her self-value. This is the other side of it. She's not believing in her own value enough to attract what she really needs. She's believing only enough, I don't want to say sabotage, but only enough to re-witness the lessons. And so as long as she can't value herself more, then she's going to keep attracting these lessons, these guys that are really people she can help, but they can't do much for her. They're kind of like her own kids. You know what I mean? Um, I know exactly so, what you mean, because I know her <laughs> and you're spot on. <laughs> and so... And so it's a maturity thing, but that maturity factor only comes in when she believes she's worth it. And mm -hmm. that would take a little bit of healing. That would take mm -hmm. a kind of a reprocessing of how she sees herself and understanding her true strengths. Right now, I don't feel like she really understands her strengths. I feel like she's kind of feeling like a, a raft floating out in the ocean with no paddles. Like she mm -hmm. doesn't have as much drive and, and passion for why she's actually here because she doesn't know. And, you know, that's really critical too. Um, there's a lot of things she could do, but I don't see her doing them right now. So I would agree with that wholeheartedly. And she does, and I've told her, I've told her this exact same stuff, but yeah, I think it's good that she'll hear it from a, a you know, outside source yeah. other than, cause you don't even know who she is. Right. So I have no idea who she is. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, no, that was really good. It's self-worth, self-esteem. So, Okay. And the, uh, the two questions from the last person, and her name mm -hmm. is Joan, Joan Hyams Schmitz. She doesn't care if I say her full name. So Joan, okay. um, so her son died at age um, 20. His name was Mark. And she's saying, I'm wondering if Mark has been around me this week as I deal with arthritis stuff. I have, she's got all this arthritis, this stuff going on, you know, like autoimmune I'm doing holistic stuff this week, Epsom salt baths, meditation, journaling, burning a letter to a, for, for a family member she was having problems with. And she's also been asking Archangel Michael to put light around her. I feel better than I did. Is Mark helping me? Is there more I can be doing? I know this flare up has to do with grief, sadness, and all of my anger. So she's, she's wanting to know if her son is around, if Mark is around her, and if he has any messages for her regarding that specific flare up situation she's got going on. She hasn't had anything going on for a long time. Yeah, uh, Mark is around. Um, initially, I kept seeing palm trees. Um, look like San Diego, actually. Um, but anyways, he... Um, 
I would say, well, what he's saying uh, more directly is that, yes, he's absolutely with his mom. He's giving to her. Yes, he's around. Um, specific about the flare up. Um, he said something about dad. Um, is her husband dealing with physical illnesses? So her, <laughs> his dad died mm -hmm. when Mark was very young of cancer, okay. really young. So he, I don't think Mark really even remembered him much. Um, but then mm -hmm. she remarried and mm -hmm. she's still married to that guy now. And his name's Guy. She's still married to that guy. <laughs> and she, and okay. so I don't know if he called him dad. You know, I don't really know. He might have called yeah. him dad. Okay. Um, well, he was mentioning dad. Um, and so it's either in reference to his dad passing and her needing to heal still from that. Mm -hmm. Things that she might still be holding on to that's creating stress in her. Um, or he was referencing um, the stepfather, if he called him dad. Uh, he referenced him as dad, and it felt okay. like dad energy, um, which we inherit just like uh, an adoptive father, uh, an adopted child. Um, we inherit the memories of those ancestors, too, when we connect to them, when we become ingrained and learn from them. We also adapt and literally evolve with their lineage as well. And so there is an overlay there that he could be referencing. But the way it came up was he was worried about, he said, dad's health. And in that sense, showing that the stress that she might be building, trying to take care of him or be worrying for him is actually affecting her um, stress levels, basically. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he thinks that uh, she'll be fine, that she needs to go on a walk. He was showing me that she really does need to go to a beach. I think that's part of the reason why those visions came up first. She needs to get to the ocean. Um, she needs to get into nature. But it's something about the warmth of the sun and the sand and, and the palm trees that I saw in the initial vision is really, I think, the point of interest that he was pushing across when I had it. Mm. Well, we're in Cincinnati. She she, she's in Cincinnati with us. So so there's no warmth. She's going to have to take a vacation. <laughs> He's going to have to travel them. Yep. And he wants her to, he wants her to go, you know, he wants her to get out and go where she needs to decompress in that sense and connect. Um, but it is a very warm and inviting place that he showed me. Uh, it actually looked like San Diego. Didn't look like Florida, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know, maybe there's family out there. Maybe there's a place that she had gone before. Maybe there's a connection to his father and his biological father, his mother, and that space that I saw, but there is a tie there. There is a connection, I feel like, to the biological father and, and his death and some of the pain she's carrying. There could absolutely be something going on with his uh, stepfather, and that's affecting her in the sense of stress. But the answer to all of it was get in the sun, get out into nature, go to a beach, decompress, basically, let go of the yeah. stress. I think she was focusing a lot on an argument with a family member over the holidays because holidays are hard for her now when you lose your son mm -hmm. it's a little mm -hmm. different right so like there was an argument and then i don't think it's a coincidence personally that she gets a, a arthritis flare-up you know when she right after an argument with a close family member do you know what i mean i think it's totally connected yep. like well i can i can tell her what will prevent that um, in a physical sense, uh, three tablespoons of honey and a quarter teaspoon of, of cayenne pepper for seven days uh, mm. will we'll take that away. And if you want to continue mm -hmm. a regimen, I would take it down to two tablespoons of honey and a quarter uh, teaspoon of cayenne every other day. A lot of people are going to be writing that shit down. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. good to know. And obviously... This may not be obvious to everyone that, that listens to you, but people that are around me, um, organic, natural, local, you want the, the products that are closest to you for mineral content and natural, obviously, without pesticides and bees that have been sprayed mm. with poison. Um, and so, yes, if you're using natural organic products in general, you will heal versus not. So, <clears throat> so yeah, try that one on. To all those nice. out there with arthritis and watch watch as your arthritis goes away that is great okay um so her second question this is still joan i have a friend dave who suffered a stroke early this week 
and he was and and was alone for many hours before he was found and taken to a hospital. He can't speak or swallow and has some paralysis. I'm wondering if he will survive. I also wonder if he's in some in-between state, maybe partially here, partially on the other side. So this is her Joan's friend Dave had a stroke and left alone for quite a few hours before they found him. Okay. And so he did pass or no? No, no, no. She's saying in, in he's, she's wondering if he'll survive. Like what's oh, okay. going on with him? Like, is he in an in-between state? Is he, is he, number one, is he going to survive? Like, or what's going on with him? Cause I guess he's in a, it sounds like he's in a coma. He's in a, he can't speak. He can't swallow. And he has some paralysis. Um, so she's wondering if he'll survive and if he's in an in-between state. Uh, I don't know if that survive. doesn't. He's not. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, Joan. He's not going to survive. Um, well, I mean, without sounding brass and harsh, none of us survive. <laughs> <laughs> So it's true. for him, none though, of us are him, getting out of here alive. <laughs> that's right. If you want to ascend, you have to let go of the earthly body. And for him, uh, it's been a tough, it's been a tough scenario because he doesn't want to let go. He's been fighting against it. And is, mm -hmm. you know, some of us can put up a good fight when the death angel comes. And for him, um, it's not that he's a, a champion of the life force, but his life force is strong. And so though he has and carries more of the passive energy to appease those around him um he naturally is a leader in a heart really strong integral person really gives a lot uh, of the heart you know outwardly um not in all of his actions but that's what his true character is and so when death presents itself to him and, and the universe just did um he fought it and he did a good job so it left him in this state. So yes, it is a uh, in-between. He will be passing. But he could hang on to this state as long as he's willing to fight. And he's got a lot of life force. So we'll see, you know, mm -hmm. um, if 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 more people are there to support him, hold his hand. Um, I feel like he can recognize people's presence and, and who's around him. Then he will fight more. Um, it doesn't mean he's going to heal completely but he will fight to stay alive more. So, so his free will can kind of keep him around for a while if he chooses. Um, it's free will only if you have the life force to support it. In this okay. particular case, he has the life force to support that choice. But like I said, uh, he's fighting against the death angels. So, mm. you know, you can put up as much of a fight as you want, really. And you can win. I've, been there and done that i have seen people conquer death and come back i myself saw the death right. and and right. it wasn't it's not always us that gets to even speak for ourselves in that space our spirit guides step in because they're the ones that put us together like factory workers they're the ones that step in and say okay he can go or no he can't and if if your spirit guides say yes he can and the death angel comes in and says all right time to go and you're like hell no i won't go then <laughs> there's a fight. There's literally like an energetic fight where the death angel's sitting there looking at you. It's more like a, a kid trying to yell at their parent, you know, the death angel mm -hmm. just kind of sits there and I'm holding the, the staff. Um, <laughs> this kind of looks at you and goes, okay, well, yeah, if, well, if you want to be in this crazy world more, all right, you know, I'll entertain that, but just know I'm right around the corner. You know, um, I literally witnessed this kind of stuff playing out. I have my whole life as a medium, but but for him, that's what I see. I see him holding out. There is an opportunity for him to heal some of the things that he has undergone if he can fight hard enough, if there's enough people, enough prayer, enough love. Love is key for healing uh, in that sense, for the rebound um, communication as well. He needs to have a goal to aim for. So surviving alone isn't going to be enough. He needs to know that he has to come back to do something. If it's conquer the world, change world marketplaces, heal a grandchild, you know, just to be there for someone's birthday. I mean, it could be something really small, but if he has a goal, he's going to have more of a chance to overcome, you know, the obstacles that are in front of him. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, 
he's he's in a pretty much a, a life battle and um most people don't have the strength to to go to to do the extent um of rebound that he does so right, so i'm not right. saying it's hopeless I'm not saying it's hopeless i'm saying there is a chance but i'm also saying that you know if he wants to he'll he'll stick around and if he doesn't he won't it's really that simple okay so, but initially you were saying that oh, he is not going to survive you just kind of meant not like i meant well, it's kind of a, maybe a silly way to think of the question, but we all die. And so it's just a matter of when, when are we going to die? Mm -hmm. And because I'm a visionary clairvoyant and a medium, I can see that. Yeah. I can see when people are going to die and, and how it's going to happen in some cases, but I don't like to talk about that for yeah. obvious reasons. And, you know, it's not my place too, because it's only a possibility it's not the absolute ever in any psychic and any visionary that tells you this is what's going to happen are, you know, not telling the truth unless it's death because death will happen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so glad you said that. I'm so glad you said that because I, I preach that to everybody. Cause you know, I know a lot about psychics, but mm -hmm. there are people who, who they, they really give all their power away to a psychic. And I'm like, wait, wait, you create your own reality. They're, they're telling you possibilities. They're reading your energetic field, your current field. And, and that's why I like going, because I don't like, I see it as guidance, like little indicators. If, if I hear something I don't want to hear, I just change it. You know, like I know that I create my own reality. I'm not giving my power away. I, I actually use it to make my life better. If it's a direction or something that I'm like, okay, wait, switch, you know, and, 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 and I keep my power at all times. So that's important for people to know. And I'm glad you brought it up. Cause I almost feel like I yeah. need to say that in every video, I need to say that. Remember yeah. you create your own reality A psychics only seeing possibilities and probabilities. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. we can change things. Mm -hmm. I mean, except, except death because we have exit points, right? Aren't they mm -hmm. um, exit points where we sure. can choose. I've heard there can be even be up to five different exit points and you know be like okay this is the one i'm taking or you know what maybe i'm going to stay on this ride for a little bit longer <laughs> yeah um i wouldn't put a number to it um but i would say that there are definitely opportunities and, and one could say that every breath you take is an opportunity to die if you just hold your breath long enough and so it's a Gosh. choice to exist it's a choice to be here it's a choice to accept it and if you're constantly living day by day saying, God, I hate my life. Why am I here? What the F am I doing? You know, then it's time to really dig in and quit asking the questions without giving yourself answers. Mm -hmm. Answer it. The answer is inside of you. So stop wasting your time just wallowing in your shit and take a shower and then see how you actually smell. You know what I mean? <laughs> because we all have a beautiful fragrance we all have a beautiful means and purpose to be here we all have powerful beautiful things that we can offer to this world and to ourself directly and it takes offering it to yourself directly first in order to even try to experience or attract all of those other things that you think you would want or need in this life and so get off your ass be a light warrior and start kicking some ass. <laughs> yeah. So, Jemai, this has been such a wonderful conversation. When you talked about the light warrior thing, um, is there anything that you would that you have going on with um, yeah. with work that you would like to offer? Uh, or I'm going to also put Jemai's everything about him, his link tree in the comments below in the show notes. Whatever platform this is on, I want everyone to be able to reach out to you and you know find you become a client if whatever they need sure. so that information will be in the show notes but go ahead and tell them like your your preference how you like to be contacted and any um anything you have going yeah. on right now okay yeah well right now i'm offering about 78 or 77 percent you could say off of my light warrior series which is a powerful self-development series for those of you that have done the work who have done some healing who are well on your way in the path this is an excellent, excellent collegiate level education on personal and self growth and healing, evolution, extrasensory capability, belief, trust, relationships, you name it. 27 classes 
worth over seven thousand dollars for just seven seventy seven right now. So seven hundred and seventy seven dollars gets you twenty seven powerful personal development classes. These classes are online. You'll be witnessing videos just like this of me talking to you, and you'll have questions to answer for yourself to grow through. The whole series is designed to trigger the shit out of you, to force you to heal while you're educating and learning the tools to overcome. And so it's a beautiful symphony of opportunity for a very, very amazing price right now. Uh, nice. I also will be offering discounts periodically for the holidays. If you're looking at my Instagram or if you're on my Light Warrior community, you can sign up on my website, shineyourlightwellness.com. You can also get to that website through shineremotewellness.com. It's the same place. Um, and you can sign up for the Light Warriors there. You can also take advantage of discounts by signing up for the Light Warriors on other services that I offer. And you can also off obviously see all the different things I offer on that website. Um, I always am open to creativity. I have a lot of clients who really need very specific types of work. And if hypnosis and healing and coaching just doesn't fully take care of what you need, talk to me because we can take care of you. Um, I teach in over 18 healing modalities, 12 world shamanic practices. I go right to the core of what you are for each client. And I will assure you life changes even after one session. And so if you want jewelry, go to Jim I designs, J I M E Y E designs.com and check out the shine healing jewelry. That's like the balance, the complete balance that you held up earlier. You'll be able to find that on there and many, many more powerful healing tools if you want something special for the holidays. Um, and I do want to give discounts to your listeners, hon. Anybody awesome. who, who contacts me or uses the code. Um, wait, what's the name of your name of your company again? I'm sorry. Day one. Day one. So day one, 25% will get you Day, day one, 25% as a discount code will get you 25% off of any of my services and any of my jewelry for the next three days. So I'm going to go ahead and have my team put that on the websites. And if um, you're not seeing discounts on the Shine Remote or Shine Your Light Wellness discount, email me, text me, let me know, have the code handy, send the code to me through email, and I will schedule you myself and we'll take care of payment through me. Should they, um, but should they write your, up your, your, day one O N E or the number one, like D A Y one or O N E O N E. Yeah, okay. O -N -E. yeah. Um, if you just put a number one, I'll get it. But I don't <laughs> think we have, I don't think I can use the codes on my wellness website. So again, if you just reach out to me, I'll give it to you. That way I know you listen to this podcast and you're one of the many amazing followers you have. And, uh, you know, I look forward to helping anyone out there. Um, next to that, you know, I am working on an international business based in crypto, decentralizing, moving away from banks and being able to barter and exchange any product or service in the world through the system that we're launching in Switzerland in March. And if you yourself are tech savvy or know of someone who wants to invest in the future, definitely get a hold of me or go to the website. Uh, appreciate.com, uh, which is Prishy, P R E S H Y, and the number eight.com. You can see uh, all the format and what we're working on and get excited with us as we're using AI, 20th generation AI, uh, to advance our world in a major way when it comes to cutting out the middlemen and mm. getting your true value out of everything you have. And so we're changing the world on an economic platform as well. So, That's so important I want to help you. I help professionals. I help moms. I help grandparents. I help orphans. You let me know if you need my help and I'm here for you. Just go to shineyourlightwellness.com or reach out to me directly and go to my Instagram, Jim I Merck, at Jim I Merck, or on Facebook at Shine Your Light Wellness. And you guys, I have all of his information in the comments below and the show notes. He's got a link tree. I follow him on Instagram. So if you have a heart to just look at my Instagram, you'll see I'm following him. And don't forget, if you liked this episode, please hit like, please comment, ask us questions. We will reply to your questions 
below and share with a friend, anyone that you think, maybe you're doing fine, but maybe you have a friend who's struggling. Share it with a friend. And we appreciate everybody watching and sharing. And thank you so much for uh, sticking with us. And I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Bye, everyone. Thank you guys.